So the RX 3050 is launching, and as expected, it's stronger than the 6500 XT with its 160% bigger die size. Although, let's be honest, that's not its real die size for the majority of its life, most likely. We'll get to that and the shenanigans going on with the 3050 later. First, as almost always, I want to just start by getting the performance comparisons out of the way. Look, the 3050 is 10 to 30% better than a 6500 XT if you are willing to accept and avoid the 6500 XT's weaknesses, and it has many. If you do cater to the 6500 XT's weaknesses, then it's, you know, the 3050 often isn't even 20% better. But at the same time, there's no way around the fact that there are just things you can do with the 3050 that you cannot do with the 6500 XT. And I don't think it's unfair to dwell on this example here, at least, which is a popular esports title in 1440p. And guess what? You can run it at 120 hertz with reasonable settings on the 3050. That is just something you are not going to do with the 6500 XT. And I think this is the most fair way to portray the situation between these graphics cards which I do think the 6500 XT does belong in reviews as it is actually a card people can actually buy and to not show it and just show a bunch of cards that are $500 on eBay instead is ridiculous. People watch reviews to decide what to buy based on the real world choices they are living in. And the real world choice you are making when you look at a 6500 XT versus the 3050 is, well, I don't know. Do you have a recent system, you know, something from the past three years? With PCIe 4.0, are you willing to turn down textures in games so you can kind of have like a, I don't know, a 1664 gigabyte? Because that's what it is, minus creative features. That, that's what the 6500 XT is for. But... The 3050 doesn't have half of these compromises. If you are thinking of getting one and it's even remotely close to the same price of a 6500 XT, 99% of people should choose the 3050 over the 6500 XT. If not, if not 100%, I'm actually not sure why you would get a 6500 XT if it's close to the same price. But at the same time, that also applies to cards above the 3050 because it's not always a full tiers performance better than the 6500 XT. Oftentimes it isn't, and you can cater to those weaknesses more often than I think a lot of people are giving the card credit. In other words, it might be clearly a better choice than a 6500 XT near the same price, but the RX 6600 is also a painfully better choice than the 3050 if those two cards are close to each other in pricing. And this is why launching an actual supply of low-end cards, even if the pricing sucks compared to previous generations, is important. It starts to anchor the pricing. And so it is important that at least someone launch something in sustainable availability at a sustainable price so that you start tethering down all of these pricing tiers near each other. No one's going to get a 6500 XT for the price of a 3050, and no one should get the 3050 for the price of an RX 6600. So at the end of the day, it's all going to come down to if you're shopping for an RTX 3050, is it actually available? What is it actually priced at? And at whatever price you find it for, is it worth getting at that price over other graphics cards above it and below it? That's what a real review or analysis should be. And well, this is where I start telling you that there is a reason that just about every OEM and distributor I've talked to cares zero about the RTX 3050, and they will be using the 6500 XT in large volumes in their pre-built systems. It's because their systems have PCIe 4.0, and according to almost everyone I've talked to, they can't get a 3050, at least not for 250. It costs way more than that, and there's almost no supply that they can buy in real volume. Although, I guess before I move forward, I want to be very clear, though, then, about my general advice to consumers, because I don't care about OEMs, and I don't care about, you know, the macro-level market. I, I also care about the individual. I'm going to say this, and it's pretty similar to what I said about the 6500 XT. You should be trying to get a 3050 near MSRP if you are desperate, but don't blindly buy it at prices that exceed 50% over MSRP. This card, the 3050, is better than the 6500 XT if you can get it for only, I guess, 40% more or less than that. For example, of course, you should get a $250 3050 over $200 6500 XT. Of course, you should get a $300 3050 over a $250 6500 XT. But remember that I don't 
recommend the 6500 XT really above MSRP, certainly not above 250. And so if I don't recommend the 6500 XT at 250 or higher, then I do not recommend the RTX 3050 at 350 or higher. You're just getting too close to the often $450 RX 6600s that are just an entire other tier of performance. And I often do see it for less, not all the time, but I do. And I'm letting you know that at least here in the United States, before this recording early in the morning, I did see some 6500 XTs pop up on Newegg for $200, for $199. They sold out immediately, but I guess, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you're thinking you have to pay $400 for the 3050 because you're never going to see a 6500 XT again below, I don't know, 270 that's not true. The supply on that card, at least, is going to keep coming. And all of these cards are compromises, so I would think you'd want to waste as little money as you can until things start getting better in late quarter three, which I believe they will, but that's for another video. And so... Yeah, I guess this is where I get to more specific details about availability, including not just in the United States, but in other regions of the world. I think the 3050 is going to go down as another hilarious publicity stunt by Jensen Wang that, at the end of the day, ends up making AMD look bad and is just another example of this bizarre reality where NVIDIA continues to manipulate every launch just like they did to the 6600 XT launch. But first, an ad from a sponsor. That's right. Just be good. Today's video is brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive online learning platform for learning mathematics, physics, and computer science subjects at your own pace. It's not up for debate. Interactive learning is far more effective than watching lecture videos, and Brilliant understands this. That's why this platform is built on fun, hands-on lessons for math, science, and computer science courses, and they have all types of courses for all types of abilities and knowledge levels, so you'll find something that interests you for sure. You can use Brilliant to stay sharp on mathematical subjects you learn in college, like linear algebra and my case or learn something new and relevant that's modern like topics like hashing functions and cryptocurrency so whether you're keeping sharp or learning new things for a new year brilliant is free to start and waiting for you join the millions of people already learning on brilliant with a special offer just for moore's law is dead listeners the first 200 listeners will get 20 percent off their annual membership clicking on this link and using this free membership really helps moore's law is dead and it helps you stay sharp or learn new subjects use brilliant today all right. Good dog. All right, then. Let me get into what you can expect in terms of availability for the RTX 3050 tomorrow, and more importantly, after tomorrow. At least based on the usual sources I've talked to, which, by the way, were dead on that there would be 6500 XTs at MSRP at launch for one day, and then pricing would go up on average, but likely not on average hit $300 dead on, at least in the U.S. and Australia. Anyways, though, these sources are saying they basically don't expect any sustained volume for the RTX 3050. And again, all of these sources, they're a mix of distributors, AIBs, and large storefronts that have a 100% track record you know the first one got a decent amount of 6500 xts for their launch but got zero 3050s for this launch and don't expect to receive any for weeks another source says that they expect it to be spotty at best but didn't want to give any firm numbers because honestly they're told all different types of things from nvidia and they don't trust what nvidia says about supply anymore another source says that at least right now there's almost no volume on the way and everything they are getting is above $320 and another source here and I specifically say in Asia just to make clear not all of these are from the US says that most shipments aren't coming for weeks and the average pricing is still disputed so looking at this information I am so far forced to commit to what I was told weeks ago which is that the RTX 3050 launch really does seem to be a publicity stunt to make AMD look bad. That effectively NVIDIA isn't going to be helping the market at all with this card. You probably can't buy especially not after launch day and after launch day if you find one it's probably going to be at least 50% more than the 6500 XT. And right now this is important. I want to make it very clear why the RTX 3050 is not possible to keep around $250 for any sustained amount of time, at least not over the next few months. And I don't know how many times I'm going to have to bring it up, but here we go again. In 
2020, both me and Gamers Nexus confirmed that NVIDIA was having trouble keeping Ampere around its MSRP. And specifically, Gamers Nexus had it on good authority, and since then I've been able to back up his information myself, that the RTX 3060 6 gigabyte would have been hard to profit for most AIBs around $250. Think about it. At least at launch, the RTX 3050 uses the exact same die and probably the same boards and coolers as the RTX 3060, a card that would have had less RAM when components were 33% cheaper at least two years ago. If NVIDIA could not make a 6 gigabyte GA106 card for 250 with 2020 component costs, jack them up by 50 percent and yes they are paying more for ram they are not immune from increased ram pricing like some people seem to be suggesting in the comments there's no way they're making an 8 gigabyte ga106 card for 250 sustainably or even re remotely close to 250. this is a publicity stunt to make amd look bad just like they did around the 6600 xt launch but just like back then the 3060 was only magically in stock for like a day or two that's what's going to happen with the 3050 as well and make no mistake if you get one of these 3050s remember nvidia could have made it a six gigabyte 3060 for less money but again i'm not telling you not to buy it out of principle you got to do what's best for you it's just it needs to be made very clear what's going on here right Remember, I leaked that my sources were surprised AMD was indeed launching Navi 24 to the desktop market. It was always meant to be a low-end laptop. But then they thought, well, Arc seems to be coming out a little later than expected. Let's see if we can divert some of this supply and surgically strike low-end desktop with something that we actually can make sustainably at $200. And that's where the 6500 XT came from. And I think it took NVIDIA off guard. And they weren't planning to launch the 3050 to desktop with GA107 for months. So what do you do? Well, you can just take 3060 dies, disable them to the exact same config, including arbitrarily cutting down the PCIe lanes and... Well, then you can just have this publicity stunt launch next to the 6500 XT launch, probably supply nothing for months until you're ready to launch the GA107 variants, which will be the exact same specs and likely the same performance. And you did it again. AMD looks bad. People don't buy AMD because they think they should be waiting for a 3050. They'll never be able to buy at any reasonable cost. And yep, I don't know. I guess there it is. NVIDIA wins again. <laughs> But again, I want to show these quotes. I am hearing that there will be plenty of regions with almost no availability. And looking over these quotes, I'm forced to actually conclude that RTX 3050s will probably be most easily bought in a handful of the biggest online storefronts in each region. Like, for example, Newegg in the United States and whatever its counterpart is in the UK and their counterpart in every country that you might live in in Europe. And, and make no mistake, I am actually told some interesting things from some sources in Europe that they do expect some stock in some regions there, but that it is 100% expected to sell out instantly and that there are no more on the way. And so, yeah, I guess I also want to be clear that when you see tweets like this showing, I don't know, hundreds or a thousand cards near MSRP in the UK, that's shit. A below average launch is 10,000 cards. So I still suspect this launch is going to be relatively speaking very small but maybe bigger than nvidia's recent launches that have zero availability and so again i'm i'm, I'm pretty much forced to give the same advice that i gave for the 6500 xt except with the caveat that this is going to be the blink of an eye of a launch right if you can get the 3050 for 250 or even 300 and you're desperate for a card for the love of God, definitely do it. You know, I don't care. Fuck AMD. Don't not buy this card out of principle. This is a better choice, even remotely close to the price of a 6500 XT. And if you're desperate, I'm telling you, you should try to get this. Just don't feel bad if you don't, because it does not sound like there will be any sustained volume coming for this card. And any sustained volume is frankly likely to be above the MSRP of the 3060 that was always fake. And at that point, you might as well get an RX 6600, at least in the US. And that's about all I have to say in this video. 
honestly, there, there's just a part of me that's getting bored with the excruciating predictability of what the conversation is around every single graphics card launch these days. Every recent GPU, 3070 Ti, 3080 Ti, 6600 XT, 6600, 6500 XT, it gets released, it gets mostly bad reviews, half of the press tells you not to buy it, says don't take it anymore, don't normalize these prices, then people go out and buy it anyways, and the people that waited, that didn't get that token set of cards just launched near MSRP to pretend it still exists, those people get burned again and then get told to keep waiting again. At a certain point, I feel like this community needs to acknowledge that it's not worth worrying about normalization anymore because it's been fucking normalized for six graphics card launches. Do what's best for for you. I am not going to talk down to you and pretend that you're a bad person if you don't do what's best for you. These are trying times. You need to do what's best for you. And what's best for you is to try to get the RTX 3050 near MSRP tomorrow. Just like I told you to do with the 6500 XT. Just like I told you to do with the 6600. And just like I told you to do with the 6600 XT. We are long past this being normalized. This is the new market. It's done. And, and if there is something that you want to do to try to stop the normalization of overly elevated prices, it's don't let companies get away with removing MSRP, which I am flabbergasted at how many tech outlets have not been talking about the 3080 12 gigabyte. It is troubling. And you know what? The last thing, too. I've never been afraid to tell you guys to just go buy a console or look for laptops that have a better price performance than desktop. At a certain point, it also needs to be understood that the biggest problem really with why these prices are getting normalized is that people assume they have to game on a desktop. And if one market gets stupid, it might be time to take a break from the market or at least take a break from assuming you have to have the newest thing in this market because there are consoles and there are laptops i have a friend that just got a 3060 laptop that came with a 165 hertz 1440p display and a 5900 hs for 900 dollars open box it's a way better deal than any desktop you're going to get and the funny thing is one of the reasons it's probably priced more competitively than desktops are right now is because when shipping costs go up at least a laptop is smaller and has all the components bundled together whereas boutique ordering a bunch of separate parts for a desktop when each one of those parts has six times higher shipping costs is kind of unsustainable until shipping prices come down and they will come down pricing is not going to go back to where it was in 2019 but it will get substantially better than where it is now i believe by quarter four and so again if you're waiting, it's not going to be for three years. Higher prices are here to stay, but they're not here to stay at this level. And any card you buy right now is a holdover to the far better cards that are coming less than a year from now. So just wait for that. And just remember, if you do buckle, if you do get in, at least try to reward the product you're buying as it being one actually near MSRP. Because that's all anyone can be asked to do in a market that we all have to acknowledge has permanently changed so i hope you enjoyed this video there was a lot of passion in it just like my recent ones and usually there wouldn't be in launches that are this low end but i feel like this is just a turning point in the market a time where people are going to look back and be pretty pissed off at when things changed but you know, the best you can do is arm yourselves with facts and with the truth and do what's best for you and not wind up complaining so much that you make the situation worse for yourself. Don't forget that if you do manage to get an RTX 3050 8 gigabyte tomorrow for frankly under $350 and you had anything, whether it was an RX 580, an RX 570, a 1660 Ti, then most of those cards will be able to be sold on the used market for about the price you paid for that. Maybe a little less, but some of them more, and that you are not helpless. You can make intelligent decisions and benefit from the elevated prices yourself. But anyways, this is just my advice. This is one person's opinion. It is maybe very passionate, but not meant to be an attack on anyone else. It's just... I'm very passionate about what I think are some points being missed in this current trying time, and I don't want people to miss them. Anyways, 
Take it with what you will. Take it with a grain of salt if you want to. Or if you really enjoy it, consider subscribing to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel where you will get tons of updates and leaks on upcoming products that eventually I do think will be more reasonably priced for the performance increases they bring. And yeah, I've got a lot more Intel stuff coming pretty soon, it seems like. And I'm working on some some wild alchemist information that i'm not even sure how to portray or when to tell you guys about it but you're not going to want to miss it so yeah again subscribe to the moore's laws dead youtube channel ring the bell button don't forget that we can't do this without our patrons that they get early ad free access to broken silicon the ability to ask guests and me questions on broken silicon access to the moore's laws dead discord and exclusive podcasts like die shrink this week's we are talking about what could have made the 6500 xt better realistically not something where you magically can add stuff but like if hindsight was 2020 and they redesigned it could they've done it and should amd be focusing on a gamer only die that creators and miners don't want in the future because at the end of the day i think what you might say is the 6500 xt was maybe a good idea but horrible in execution what would a good executed gamer only die look like because i think we need that every generation but uh yep that'll be for that piece of content i hope you enjoyed this one thank you for watching <laughs>